We have Blumenbach to thank for the category named Caucasian for Europeans. But do most modern day European Americans know the origin of this word? Caucasian? No. So I do not know the origin of where that came from. The origin of the word Caucasian, I wouldn't know. Caucasian? Um, no. It was a region, but I don't know. That's, that's as close as I can get. I have no idea. Blumenbach coined the term Caucasian because he believed that the women of the Caucasus Mountains were the loveliest women in the world, and that Caucasians were the original and the most beautiful race. In inventing this racial category, Blumenbach was also considering Christian mythology, which teaches that original humans must have repopulated the world near Mount Ararat after the biblical flood. And many naturalists believed that Noah and his family had to have been white and they landed after the flood near the Caucasus region, a place many speculate is close to the location of the mysterious Mount Ararat. With African slavery being the fuel for European wealth in the Americas, there was a constant need to justify European imperialism and one of the most brutal slave systems ever invented. Slavery really was an outgrowth of imperialism. Imperialism is when the ruling interests in one society go out and they expropriate the land, the labor, the natural resources, uh, and the capital uh, of, another of another people, another country. And once they do that, they will often enslave. That's what the Romans often went out and conquered just to get slaves. I think it's really an important element to really see that it, it really wasn't about uh, black people being scientifically inferior or uh, morally inferior uh, or inferior in any way. It was about taking advantage of an opportunity to make money and, and it was about greed. I don't believe that um, that the European conquest of the world, they didn't do this because they were motivated by racism, they did it because they were motivated by greed. With so much wealth on the line, scientists of all varieties were more than willing to advance a theory that reaffirmed with the weight of scientific certainty that Africans were biologically meant to be slaves. Basically, these pseudo-scientists invented diseases and maladies that rationalized the inhuman European system of slavery. One such disease was drapetomania. In the 19th century, as late as 1850, you had eminent psychiatrists like Samuel Cartwright, like uh, Benjamin Rush, whom we might have some admiration for in some respects. He's done, he, he was, for his day, he was doing some progressive things. But they talked about, for instance, they talked about drapetomania. And drapetomania, or maybe drapetomania, I don't exactly remember how it's pronounced, um, but drapetomania was a mad disease that slaves suffered from. It was, it manifested itself as the mad, uncontrollable impulse to run away from slavery. And this, why would a slave in his right mind leave the security and comforts of the plantation uh, where he's bound with his master who's feeding him and housing him and everything else to go racing off, um, uh, be seized by this impulse. And, they, and, these, and these eminent psychiatrists said, this is as real a mental illness as any that we've ever observed. The fact that uh, Africans wanted to run away from their slavers was a, uh, an illness on the part of Africans. And um, I mean, it sounds absurd, and, and it was absurd. So they would make up these terms, like drachmania, in order to justify their behavior. 
and and say that this, there's something sick about a slave that doesn't want to be a slave. Another psychiatric disease invented by Samuel Cartwright was dysesthesia Ethiopica, a disorder that causes laziness and drowsiness in African slaves, but found even more so among free Negroes. According to Cartwright, Almost all free blacks suffered from this affliction without some white people around to, quote, direct them and to take care of them, unquote. The cure? To whip the African with a leather strap and, quote, then to put the patient to some hard kind of work in the sunshine, unquote. Afterwards, Cartwright assures that the African will, quote, look grateful and thankful to the white man whose compulsory power has restored his sensation and dispelled the mist that clouded his intellect." Unquote. Scientific um, racism is a, was a manipulation and uh, it was designed primarily to justify, to assuage guilt and to, and to justify the system of slavery that existed. Scientists and U.S. President Thomas Jefferson the man who once wrote that all men are created equal was a slaveholder who also made pseudo-scientific remarks about the people who were making him immensely rich. Jefferson wrote that white people had prettier skin and hair, smelled better, and that even black people preferred to mate with whites over another black, just as jungle apes preferred to mate with blacks instead of mating with another jungle primate. Naturalist Charles Darwin, despite his immense contributions to science, did not escape the racist assumptions of his time. If you read Darwin in his The Descent of Man, you find that he was a terrible bigot. Charles Darwin um, had a very strange belief about human development. He felt that the great differences between primitives in the Pacific Islands and the distinguished advanced English gentlemen of, of his society, the differences were so great that they had to reflect differences in the evolution of the brain. The other person who had come upon uh, the whole theory of evolution, Alfred Russell, actually lived with um, a number of these tribes on the islands. And he argued, I don't believe that's true. I found that among these natives, I found people who had a wit and a subtlety and a perception of intelligence that could match anything that you find in the British Royal Society, you know, the scientific society. Well, that was like shocking. Like Darwin, Several European and American scientists transferred their racism to scientific claims about racial classification and characteristics. Scientific racism said that, that Africans were incapable of, of intellectual and creative expression.
racist scientists also developed fields of study that focused on the measuring of human bodies to assign physical, intellectual, and moral traits. Pseudo-disciplines, such as craniology and phrenology, were invented to measure head shape, and invariably, scientists aligned the shape of European heads with intelligence and morals, and the shape of African heads with intelligence deficiencies and depravity. No matter what the physical evidence, Africans were almost always on the bottom and Europeans on top. It was a self-fulfilling prophecy in the guise of science which argued that heredity was fixed and unchangeable and that Europeans would always outperform all other races in every matter of importance. Even after slavery was officially ended in Europe and later in the United States, scientists persisted with racist rationales for why whites were superior to all other races. One major development in this area was the eugenics movement. Eugenicism is about the purity of a breed. It's about racial purity. Eugenicism has, has had a history that um, is all about trying to justify or rationalize the superiority of whites. But it's also designed to suggest that white individuals have not only this higher level, this, you know, this escalated level of whatever, personality, intelligence, behavior, etc., but that because of all of that, we need to just kind of keep it in the race, right? And so none of this miscegenation really works. None of this mixing across the breed is what miscegenation refers to. You don't want to do that. What you want to do is actually stick within your own culture. But how do you secure that in a nation that is constantly you know, having more and more interracial relationships? And so one way to secure that is through providing scientific rationales for how individuals who are not white um, deserve to be ignored, deserve to be dismissed, deserve to be kind of dislodged from this sense of social normality. And if we can brand them and identify them as being abnormal, then of course you won't find them attractive. Why do we have to teach our children or even consider teaching our children at a young age about issues of race? I mean, why is that a constant paranoia or constant concern in our minds? And what I'm arguing is that it stems from this scientific uh, notion of eugenicism, that it began when we started scientifically rationalizing and justifying a sense of superiority of whites. Eugenics was a pseudoscience which argued breeding would advance the human uh, well-being of society. And, and what we have to do is, is encourage the superior forms of people, the tall blonde uh, ones, to breed more and, and discourage the people of color and lesser peoples. It was a pretty much a racist theory, much in vogue, and very much embraced by the Nazis. It's, it's gone for the most part, but there's still a residue of that kind of view in our mentality, I think.